Hi everybody, this is Della from The Beauty of Play. We just got through finishing sending in our evaluation for homeschooling for the year. We're in Florida, so there are a couple different choices you can choose in Florida. We are registered with our local county, which requires that we keep a portfolio and that we have an evaluation done by a teacher that has their teaching certification once a year. So an annual evaluation, which we just got finished doing, and that led me into reflecting upon last year. So I'm going to share some thoughts about how our homeschooling went last year, things that worked, things we need to change, and what a roller coaster high school is. I'm going to do this in two videos. This video is going to be for my daughter's fourth grade year. So you can find what I had previously planned for this year in my on my blog, thebeautyofplay.com, and I talked about what my plans were for the fourth grade year. If you're looking for a comparison, that's a great place to start. Most we had planned seven or eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different blocks. And I am pleasantly surprised that we got through almost seven of them. I tend to be overly optimistic on what we can get done and one of the things that is really continuing to work well for us is this combination of Waldorf and Charlotte Mason. So our main lesson blocks are like huge unit studies, Waldorf style. I incorporate um, as much of the other subjects as I can into that block, but sometimes all of them don't fit easily or sometimes I don't have plans or there's not an easy connection. For the other studies, it's more Charlotte Mason style. So I have an enrichment loop that we do that includes geography, art study, music study, art, writing, like free writing, nature study, and I think that is all of them. Originally, we were going to do language arts, math, copy work, and Spanish every single day. And that just didn't work for us. It was too much. Those four subjects also went on a loop and we did two of each of those subjects a day. I'm not really good because I love to play with math and making sure that we master certain aspects of math. And so I created a table to help me keep up with what we needed practice in and how much we had practiced those concepts. That table was invaluable to me. And even though we didn't, I wasn't fabulous at making sure everything was checked off, what it did do was remind me of concepts that we needed reviewing or going over. That worked out really well, so well, that I'm going to do that for language arts this year as well. So I make sure that we hit certain points on grammar, writing, phonetics, and punctuation. I was really happy with each one of the units that we went over. Some, of course, come together better than the others. If you remember, at the beginning of the year, we were doing watercolor and grammar combined. The watercoloring, the wet on wet technique has always been a little bit of a challenge for me in that it's difficult for me to just let things go <laughs> and bring the form out of the color and out of the water coloring um, experience itself. So that was a bit challenging and continues to be a bit challenging for me. The grammar went really well. We used Michael Clay Thompson and we brought in the parts of speech cards that we made from last year and played around with sentence structure. I was really happy with how that went. Our next unit was the Explorers unit, and that unit also went really well. Lots of information that I did not know. We were at the point in history where, where colonization is happening, and that is such a dreary time in history with the impact that it had on the world. I wanted to bring a little lightness into that. So we expanded not only for that time period, 
but um, across all time periods and across the globe with explorers. We did go over the impact that colonization had to the world, but we also studied other explorers that proved to be very interesting, like Ibn Battuta, Zhang He, and Marco Polo. That unit is on my blog also. I'll link it in the show notes. So if you're interested in Explorers Unit, you can see what we did and the resources we used on my blog. Third, third unit that we did was a capacity unit. And this was measurement, capacity, perimeter, volume. This was one of her favorite units. And unfortunately, it was a really short unit. Putting those kind of math blocks into our schedule helps to break up the monotony of the heavy reading that our history units tend to take. This is like a nice break. We usually do a read aloud, but we're not doing a whole lot of reading here. We are switching out and doing a whole lot of experimenting and math. So our next unit after that was the Renaissance unit. This happens to be my favorite just because I really love the Renaissance artists and I am fascinated by Leonardo da Vinci. So the Renaissance unit resources and activities are also on my blog. And the unit after that was Shakespeare. This, the Shakespeare unit may have been my very favorite unit. Everything just really like came together. Integrated well, the books that I chose, there was interleaving and overlapping of material. And it was really fun to do poetry recitation, especially we focused on A Midsummer Night's Dream. And there are just some really fun pieces from that play that we really enjoyed memorizing. One was from the final monologue from Puck. We also did a special numbers unit in here. I can't remember the sequence that that came in. I think it may have come before the Shakespeare unit, but this is where my curriculum, the number sums came from. I. One of the things that Waldorf does, particularly Jamie York with making my math meaningful, is to instill a wonder of numbers, a fascination. And so the number sums unit is just that. It's just playing with numbers. And that's what we did. We played with just number sums in general. We played with the Fibonacci sequence. We played with Pascal's triangle and we played with some of the multiples and spirals, and also we found perfect numbers, which is actually a thing. <laughs> so that unit is available for sale on my website. You can find it under Shop My Curricula. And that also provides just a wonderful break from the more heavy reading units that we tend to do in between. The last block that we ended in the middle of was our animal block. This one didn't go quite as expected. I think that was because of my expectations. She loves animal and I thought this would just like be fabulous. But what I have come to recognize is that she really likes being in nature and learning about the animals in nature. So we're doing a little bit more of that, pulling back from um, the intensity of reading that we were doing for that block. And um, that is where we finished the year. So a couple notes. Like I said before, the Charlotte Mason and Waldorf combination is working really well for us. What didn't work was doing the four subjects that I talked about earlier every single day. We had to split those up. It was too much. And our schedule also is turning to shift. So as many of you know, we schooled in school in the afternoon, like we get outside and do things and play. And then we come back in and after lunch we school. But the challenge that I'm having 
with my youngest is keeping a routine, keeping not so much an itinerary or a schedule, but um, a routine, a habit forms to keep us in line and make sure things get done. And that was really hard to wrangle her back in after lunch and get school started. So I'm going to have to explore different scheduling options for this year. In addition to that, I can see that we're at a point where more independent work is needed, more work on narration independently, um, handwriting and copy work independently. We will still co study the copy work passage and analyze it before she works on the copy work, but that portion can be done independently and then math also I think needs to be practiced independently. Last year I did each of her math lessons with her and I think we're shifting to where she needs more mastery and less um, hand-holding through her math lessons. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video hit like and if you'd like to see more of my videos you can hit subscribe.